Hello everyone, today our lecture is about structure and functions of nucleic acids. The amino acid sequence of every protein in a cell and the nucleotide sequence of every RNA in the cell is specified by a nucleotide sequence in the cell's DNA. So DNA is current information about all RNA molecules and all protein molecules in the cell. A segment of a DNA molecule that contains the information required for the synthesis of a functional biological product, it can be protein or RNA, is referred as a gene. So a single gene carrying this information about RNA or protein. I will start now by considering the nature of the nucleotide, the fundamental building block of DNA and RNA molecule. The nucleotide consists of a phosphate group joined to the 5-carbon sugar and which are joined to the base. So you should remember that nucleotide has three main components, phosphate group, sugar, and base. Nucleic acids have two kinds of pentose sugars, the sugars which have five carbon atoms. The recurring the, uh, deoxyribonucleotide unit of DNA contains two prime deoxyribose and ribonucleotide units of RNA contains D-ribose. The sugar is called um, two deoxyribose because there is no hydroxyl at the position two just two hydrogens as you can see here so the hydrogen replaced by the OH group the base of a nucleotide is joined covalently uh, in an n beta glucosyl bond to the first carbon of the pentose both DNA and RNA contains major purine bases like adenine, guanine, and two major pyrimidine bases. In the both, um, um, that's timine, cytosine, and uracil. In both DNA and um, RNA, these pyrimidines and purines are present. The phosphates are normally joined to the C5 hydroxyl group of the ribose sugar or deoxyribose sugar. Mono, D and 3 phosphates are very common for both RNA and DNA molecules. The phosphate makes a nucleotide negatively charged. The two outermost phosphates in nucleotide are held to the rest of the molecule by the high-energy phosphoanhydride bonds. The sugar and the base alone are called nucleoside. So, the structure where we have, in addition to the nucleoside, sugar and base, adding phosphate, called nucleotide. Um, likewise, we can imagine linking the phosphate to two deoxyribose by removing a water molecule from between the phosphate and the hydroxyl on the fifth carbon to make 5 phosphomonoester. Um, thus, in the nucleotide, the um, 
the bond between phosphates and the nucleoside is called glycosidic bond. And um, the same bond is between sugar and the base. And uh, by this bond, we are making a phosphoester bond between um, the sugar and phosphoric acid. And by that, we are creating nucleotide. A nucleoside or nucleotide is named according to the nitrogenous bases. So, as you can see, that's five main um, bases we can use. And single letter abbreviations these ones, used variously as shorthand for the base alone, for the naming of the nucleoside or for the main in the whole nucleotide. And the context will usually make clear which of three entities is meant in, in the context. Nucleotides are uh, joined to each other in polynucleotide chains by the 3 hydroxyl uh, of 2 deoxyribose or ribose of one nucleotide and the phosphate attached to the fixed hydroxyl of another nucleotide. This is a phosphodiester linkage in which the phosphoryl group between the two nucleotides has one sugar esterified to it through a 3-hydroxyl and second sugar esterified to it through the 5-hydroxyl. Phosphodiester linkages create the repeating sugar phosphate backbone of the polynucleotide chain, which is a regular feature of DNA and RNA. So, um, important here that to remember that nucleotides having always, when they link to each other, we get a chain of the nucleotides and we have one end is five prime end of the chain and another end is three prime end of the chain. A DNA molecule or the deoxyribonucleic uh, acid uh, consists of two long polynucleotide chains composed of four types of nucleotide subunits. Each of these chains is known as DNA chains or DNA strands. So we see all DNA molecules are double-stranded. All chains, they are antiparallel uh, to each other and hydrogen bones between the chains uh, or more precisely between the base positions of the nucleotides holding the two chains together. Complementary base pairs in the DNA is a double helix. The shapes and the chemical structure of the bases allow hydrogen bonds to form efficiently only between A and T and between G and C, because atoms that are able to form hydrogen bonds can then be brought close together without distorting the double helix. As, it, as indicated, two hydrogen bonds form between A and T, while three form between G and C. So here, between A and T, we have two hydrogen bones, and between G and C, we have three hydrogen bones. And that's because of the chemical structure of these um, um, bases. The bases can pair in this way only if the two polynucleotide chains that contain them are antiparallel. Again, that's important issue that two strands in the DNA has to be antiparallel in order to make the whole molecule holding together. And important that this antiparality is really related to these five prime and three prime ends of these molecules. RNA molecule differs from DNA. 
And there are three main differences between RNA and DNA. First, the backbone of the RNA contains ribose rather than 2-dioxyribose. Secondly, RNA contains uracil base instead of timine. Uracil has the same single ring structure as timine except that it lacks the methyl group at position 5. And third, RNA is usually found as a single polynucleotide chain. So this was about uh, the structure of two uh, important mo uh, molecules, DNA and RNA. And now we, I will talk more about the processes where these molecules are involved. We are starting with the DNA. So in 1956, Francis Crick referred to the pathway for the flow of the genetic information as the central dogma in biology. Here you can see very schematic picture how the genetic information is flowing in, the, in all cells. And we are starting with a double-stranded DNA which needs to be uh, multiplied and the process which is um, yeah, describing the multiplication of the DNA is called DNA synthesis or replication. Uh, further, the DNA uh, used as a matrix to synthesize RNA molecule and the process is called transcription. When the RNA molecule is synthesized, it used as a matrix to synthesize proteins and the, uh, and the process called translation. So the flow of the genetic information uh, in our cells going from replication through transcription and translation. At the end we have in the final product proteins which are carrying a lot of different functions in our cells. Each DNA strand serves as a template for the synthesis of a new strand producing two new DNA molecules each with one new strand and one old strand. This is semi-conservative replication. Watson and Crick proposed the, the hypothesis of semi-conservative replication very early after the publication in 1953. They published a paper on the structure of the DNA and they proposed the process of the semi-conservative replication. The hypothesis was proved by um, the experiment which was carried by Matthew Messelson and Franklin Stahl in 1957. How genetic information is broadcasting for use inside a cell? Each cell contains a fixed set of DNA molecules also called archives of genetic information. A given segment of this DNA guides the synthesis of any identical RNA transcripts, which serve as a working copies for the information stored in the DNA archive. Transcription resembles replication in its fundamental chemical mechanism, its polarity, direction of synthesis, and its use of the template. But within transcribed segments, only one DNA strand serves as a template for a particular RNA molecule. There are three main types of RNA molecules we find in the cells. The first type is a messenger RNA. Messenger RNA accounts for, for about 5% of the total RNA in the cell and messenger RNA is the most heterogeneous of the three types of RNA in terms of both base sequence and the sizes. Messenger RNA transfers genetic information from DNA to ribosomes for protein synthesis. The next type is ribosomal RNA. 
Ribosomal RNA are found in the ribosomes and accounts for 80% of the total RNA present in the cell. Ribosomal RNA is combined with the proteins to form the ribosomes, which act as the site of protein synthesis and has, the enzyme and has all the enzymes needed for the process. And the third type of the RNA is a transfer RNA. Transfer RNA is the smallest of the all three types of RNA, having about 75 to 95 nucleotides. Transfer RNAs are an essential component of translation, where their main function is to, the, to transfer of amino acids during protein synthesis. Therefore, they are called transfer. Each of the 20 amino acids has a specific transfer RNA that binds with it and transfer it to the growing polypeptide chains. Transfer RNAs also act as ad adapters in the translation of the genetic sequence of messenger RNA into proteins. Therefore, they are also called as adapter molecules. Their translation of genetic information into amino acid sequences take place in ribosomes and is mediated by special adapter molecules known as transfer RNAs. These transfer RNAs recognize groups of three consecutive nucleotides known as codons. These four possible nucleotides at each position, the total number of permutations of these three plates is 64, a value well in excess of the number of amino acids. Table lists all 64, so here is the also 64 permutations with the left and column indicating the base of the fifth end of the triplet. The row across the top specifying the middle base and the right hand column specifying the base in the three prime position. One of the most striking features of the code is that 61 of the 64 possible triplets specifying in amino acid with the remaining three triplets being chain terminating signals. This means that many amino acids are specified by more than one codon, a phenomenon called degeneracy. Codons specifying the same amino acid are synonyms. For example, we can see that uh, UUU and UUC are synonyms for phenola, phenylalanine whereas serine is encoded by the synonyms UCU, UCC, UCA, UCG, AGU and AGC. Several codons serve special functions. The initiation codon AUG is the most common signal for the beginning of the polypeptide in all cells. In addition to coding for uh, MAT residues in internal positions of the polypeptides, the termination codons UAA, UAG and UGA, also called stop codons or nonsense codons, normally signal to the end of the polypeptide synthesis and do not code for any known amino acids. The protein coding regions of each mRNA is composed of contiguous, non-overlapping string of codons called an open reading frame. Each open reading frame specifies a single protein and starts and ends at internal sites within the messenger RNA. That is the ends of an open reading frame are distinct from the ends of the messenger RNA. Translation starts at the fifth end of the open reading frame 
and proceeds one codon at a time to the third end. The first and the last codons of an open reading frame are known as the start and the stop codons. The overall process of messenger RNA guided protein synthesis is often referred to simply as a translation, as I mentioned to you before. There are five stages of protein synthesis. The first stage is starting here. It's starting with the uh, activation of amino acid. And that's done by the transport RNA's amino oscillation. The second step is initiation. That's related to the initiation of the translation when messenger RNA and amino oscillated transfer RNA are bound to their ribosome. So here you see that the ribosome is actively starting to be involved. The third process is elongation. In elongation, the ribosome moves along the messenger RNA, matching transfer RNA to each codon and catalyzing peptide bond formation. Translation is terminated at the stop codon and the, and the last phase is termination. And the ribosomes all the units of the ribosomes are released and recycled for another round of protein synthesis. The very, very last step, uh, which is always also considering as a step of the translation, is the following synthesis. So it's actually folding the proteins after the process are synthesized. Um, there is a process uh, for the uh, protein folding or maturation. Most proteins are proceed after synthesis and some, many, uh, some amino acids may be removed and others can undergo any of hundreds of known chemical modifications until we get the final structure of the proteins. So this was a quite short lecture about a uh, structure of um, uh, nucleic acids, the DNA and RNA mm, molecules. So uh, in, a summary, um, in a summary we can say that uh, genetic information uh, all is archived and carried in the linear sequence of nucleotides in DNA. Each molecule of DNA is a double helix formed form with two complementary antiparallel strands of nucleotides hold together by hydrogen bonds between base pairs. And remember here that the hydrogen bonds are formed between G and C and A and T base pairs. Duplication of the genetic information occurs by the use of one DNA strand as a template for the formation of complementary strand. So in every new DNA molecule one strand is in U and another strand is old. The genetic information stored in an organism's DNA contains the instructions for all the RNA molecules and proteins that the organism will ever synthesize and is said to comprise this genome. For more detailed reading, if someone is interested, you can go to these uh, two books about molecular biology of the cell and molecular biology of the gene for more details. Thank you for the attention.